The second one is a story that we read in the Bible. So it is first century, it's I think 51 AD. So this Apostle Paul, fantastic communicator, I've said this many, many times, he arrives in this very developed city called Athens. So Athens is full of people who debate every day. It has people called the Stoics. The Stoics, their understanding of God was that he doesn't live in temples. Perhaps he lives, he's a force of energy, almost like a new age religion. Very educated people of their time. And in Acts chapter 17, Dr. Luke, who records this account, gets his pen and paper down and scroll down and he writes very carefully this encounter between Paul and these um, Athenians. Why? Because, you know, Athens, as, as a center of learning in the Greco-Roman culture, was taken so important that if a philosopher, if a traveling religious man has an encounter with these people, you got to record it because this is going to go in the annals of history because these people are reading every day. And so Paul listens, watches, uses all the six senses. I call them six senses because it's five plus extra. Listening, watching more, testing more, reading more. Now, so Paul hears that the Stoics think that God cannot be contained in temples. And this is, you listen to me carefully, because how do we change people unless we can understand them? This is my wish for you, this Jan and Feb. I'm just sending you wishes by these little stories so that you begin your year in a much more stronger way in terms of your understanding of business, of enterprise, of language, of country, of collective ethic. So he listens to them. And the debate really is about this force, and the force is Zeus. But Paul is speaking about Jesus Christ and God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And the Greeks are speaking of another force they call Zeus. So he steps up to the microphone to speak. And what he does, he puts his mind forward into the thoughts ideas and history of these people and calls it forward and uses it as a bridge to be able to understand them, but most importantly, to be understood, a lesson in communication. So Paul chooses to pick and quote an ancient poet, a philosopher who had lived some, I think about 340 years before him. His name was Aratus. Aratus had written a poem called the Phenomena, or Phenomena in, in English. And this poem was about natural occurrence. And this poem is speaking about Zeus. Remember, Paul speaks about Jesus Christ. He's not a, poly, a polytheist. He, he's not a believer in many gods. He's a monotheist. And he picks this story and Listen to this phenomena written 340 years before Paul is born, and it's about Zeus, and it says, and I quote, Let us begin with Zeus, whom we mortals never leave unspoken, for every street, every marked place is full of Zeus. Even the sea and the harbor are full of this deity. Everywhere, everyone is indebted to Zeus, for we are indeed his offspring. So Paul picks that. He knows these people have a sense of a God who they don't know, who they think is a force, who does not reside in temples. So he creates a connection with the Stoics in order to convince them. And he says, as some of your poets have said, and he quotes Aratus. So if you read Acts 17, 28, for we are indeed his offspring, that's from the phenomena. So some of you religious people would say, how does a religious man quote uh, pagans or people who are um, not Christians? 
how do we understand people unless we can go into what they know and use what they know as a bridge to get them to what we want them to know. That's the story that comes from cultural capital. So how will we know about other people if we don't know about ourselves first? So I began with the story of Omhoko and Isheka Tabazi as my first point that strengthens, affirms the value of cultural capital because a simple story that is a bedtime story is full of science, of technology, of innovation, okay? And then I ended with Apostle Paul trying to communicate effectively to people whose world they thought he didn't know, but he pulls out an ancient poet called Aratus, who lived 340 BC. This is 51 AD. So Paul has read about Aratus, who came from uh, the Achaia province in that region of Cilicia in Tarsus. So he takes time and reads. How can we know about other people if we don't read? How will we convince other people of the righteousness of our cause if we cannot get down to their hearts? You know, so why I like Paul is that the Bible is an agrarian book. Ishekatabazi is an agrarian story based on a farming culture. And it tells us that it doesn't matter agrarian period, philosophers, poets lived. Because this poem, the phenomena, was about seasons, constellation, farming, planting. So the story that Aratus wrote 350 years prior to Paul is used as a bridge to reach out, to communicate, to convince people to see what was important in Paul's time. So what's important in your time? So I ask you to strengthen your cultural capital in order that, one, you can know the unknown, two, reach out to those who you disagree with or who don't understand you, and be a better communicator this year using cultural capital. I thank you. Have a great weekend. I'd like to hear from you. Please email us at info at tapmedia.com and visit our website at www.tapmedia.com. You can also visit our offices located at Tomosi Business Park, Luzira, Port Bell Road, or call 0414-220-702. Thank you.